I don't know. I, I, I think a lot of people with a passing interest in music know Hungry Heart and Born to Run and Thunder Road, but they may not have. The Seeker Sessions came along with the with the arrival of everything digital, where we're all grabbing, we're grabbing one ninety nine cent song, calling it a day. We're not listening to albums thematically anymore. That's a sea change. I'm a fifty year old male, and the music business has changed top to bottom in the scope of my lifetime. I remember getting the White Album, Abbey Road, Sgt. Pepper, and listening to them as stories. There are still album craftspeople out there, but they're really few and far between, and there's a little bit of an arrogance in the music business among them, looking down at artists who are clearly doing kind of take this a la carte uh, music. It's, I have no business being here. We should make that point at the very top. Music is the ultimate subjective truth. It's your personal history. It, it gets to be the soundtrack of your life. I lost a brother a few years back, and in his high school yearbook, 1963, graduates from high school in Glenside, Pennsylvania, and he wrote, The Trouble With Life Is, There's No Background Music. He was a hopeless romantic, and this was, he died before the advent of personal, portable music. I wish he'd lived for a lot of reasons, but one of them is, you know, I keep wanting to say, bro, we have this thing called the iPod, and you can score your life, your drive, your day. If I got a big drive with my wife, we get a new playlist. I got stuff I want her to hear, stuff I just downloaded. You mentioned she and him. Uh, Thieves has become a great cut, has become a favorite in our car. Um, And as the New York Times put it, Zoe Deschanel now deserves to be called a singer and not the actress turned singer. But isn't that the great thing about the music business? Isn't that the great thing about portability? 